Hello, I'm Andy Bellavia with Aura Futurity. I've been in the hearing space for a dozen years and a hearing aid wearer for five of them. I started Aura Futurity as a consultancy uh, enabling innovators in the hearing space to carry their developments around the world to democratize hearing care. Devet, please tell me something about yourself. Hi, Andy. It's uh, good to talk to you. My name is Devet Swanepoel. I'm a professor of audiology based at the University of Pretoria in South Africa. But I also have an adjunct position at the University of Colorado in Denver. And then wearing my other hat, I'm a co-founder of the Eurex Group, where I also serve as a scientific advisor. And uh, my research interest and passion is really around making hearing healthcare more accessible, uh, particularly using innovative uh, technologies that enable new service delivery models. Well, that's terrific. I, I really appreciate that from my own point of view. We've talked about this before, how there are areas underserved with traditional hearing channels. In fact, you and I even did a podcast together with Shelly Chadha of the WHO and others talking about this very topic. And one of the devices that you've developed, the Hear OAE, sounds really interesting in that space. But before we get into the details, maybe we should begin with a bit of background on autoacoustic emissions and their use as a screening and diagnostic tool. What makes the autoacoustic measurement valuable in ways that traditional audiometric screening is not? Yeah, that's a good question, Andy. Uh, of course, autoacoustic emissions are a very valuable tool in the toolkit of hearing healthcare professionals and audiologists. It's particularly useful because it's an objective measure of auditory function, and it can be really quick to screen the integrity of the inner ear for screening purposes, but it can also be used for diagnostic purposes to really get a full view of the functioning of the cochlea across the frequency range. Um, and of course, it's a, it's a wonderful uh, testament to technolo technological developments. If we think of how sensitive the tool is, it really picks up micro sounds that are being produced by the inner hair cells of our cochleas. And uh, they then, of course, travel back through the ear canal and we can pick them up with a very sensitive little microphone. And then we can infer the integrity of the little hair cells uh, that constitute the uh, cochlea and the amplification function with inside our hearing organ. Well, that's really interesting. I mean, it's, it's a fascinating technology. Uh, how long has it existed and how has it evolved? Yes, it's remarkable to think back that it was already discovered for the first time in 1978 um, by Dave Kemp. So it's been around a long time, but with all of these discoveries, it takes a long time before they actually start to translate into real world solutions that can be used, that are well validated, and that can then really start to enter the clinical markets um, uh, around the world. So it's been around a long time, but the technology, of course, has continually evolved there's been new methods that have de developed that have also improved the efficiency, but also the accuracy of uh, the tool um, over the last couple of decades. And are there specific populations for which this is particularly useful? Yes, thanks for asking that, Andy. I think, you know, one of the, the primary uh, uses of autoacoustic emissions is in the screening of newborns. So every newborn should have their hearing screen before they leave the hospital. Unfortunately, that's not the case around the world, but that should really be the standard uh, status quo. And OAEs are absolutely perfect for that because it's a little probe that you put into the baby's ear and it takes less than a minute to get an accurate result of that little baby's hearing and uh, whether they pass or refer for further testing. So, so that's a really unique population that uh, it has a very important role to play. And then of course, in the toolkit of audiologists uh, as a diagnostic tool, it can be extremely beneficial, even as part of the basic test battery to give us information about the integrity of someone's cochlea um, uh, as a cross check with all our other test procedures. Okay, thanks for that. I can certainly see why it's useful in newborns, because if you ask a baby to raise their hand every time they hear a tone, you're not going to get much of a result. 
Absolutely, yes. It's an objective test, and I think that's one of the, uh, the advantages of that tool. Many of the audiological tools are behavioral tools, so you rely on someone to respond. But the beauty of OAEs is that um, they don't have to provide any response. Now, I read the recent paper, Neonatal Hearing Screening Using a Smartphone-Based Autoacoustic Emission Device, and a conclusion was drawn there, and I'm quoting now, that here a OAE may facilitate the centralized newborn hearing screening service in resource-constrained populations. How so? Yes, so uh, there was a brand new um, publication out uh, that have validated the Year OAE, which is the new Year X autoacoustic emission device. And um, I, I think the, the concept there is that because it fits within the philosophy of all the other Year X technologies, it really allows for decentralized hearing healthcare services. So the philosophy there is if we can put the software onto a smartphone, something that everyone is used to operating, it's very easy to generate a user experience and user interface that allows minimally trained people to actually facilitate an accurate screening test. So that's the beauty of using that kind of platform. In addition to that, the, the, the idea of using off-the-shelf technologies linked to, to the proprietary hardware means we can also ensure that the costs come down significantly. And, and that's one of the major barriers for why something like newborn hearing screening is not happening around the world, is that there's a prohibitive cost to the technologies that have traditionally been associated with OAEs. So then I take it you have a smartphone app you have an in-ear device to measure the autoacoustic emissions. And how then have you enabled this to be used with people who are not trained in hearing care specifically? Yes, yeah, so, so I think um, that's the beauty of this. This is, this is the first uh, Bluetooth enabled uh, uh, OAE device that you can use a smartphone or a tablet with. Uh, and then the little box of hardware, which is about the size of a, of a, of a smartphone, can then um, uh, you use the probe from there, put it in a little child's ear, you get the result. Um, but because we can actually um, have minimally trained people do the testing and we do rigorous quality control, and because it's already a digital device that's integrated into our cloud-based data management service, that just means we're kind of doing a paperless uh, service from start to end. We can keep track of the of the little uh, patient's details. Uh, the test result gets uploaded to a server, and it also enables teleaudiology because remotely uh, specialists or audiologists can then review the results and provide feedback through this online secure cloud-based data management service. So I think it just illustrates the power of digital health technologies, and because we've leveraged. Uh, smartphones uh, connected through Bluetooth, we've managed to really keep the cost down and it revolutionizes the mobility also of this tool. So it can literally go anywhere and be used by almost anyone. So if I understand it correctly, then the probe is Bluetooth connected to the smartphone, so it's wireless and easy to operate. And the app is also integrated with the rest of Herex's ecosystem so that there can be teleaudiology or consultations with ENT specialists in a distant location. Is that correct? Yes, I think the fact that uh, it lives within the ecosystem of our mHealth Studio uh, electronic health record system means, like all the other Year X products, the results are linked to a specific patient seamlessly uh, uploaded to the cloud whenever there's connectivity. So you can do asynchronous testing, so you don't have to be connected all the time. But when you do testing and you connect to the internet, uh, at some point it uploads to the cloud. And anyone who has access to that cloud uh, with the right privileges and um, uh, privacy linked to that, they can actually then review the record, provide feedback to the test site. So I think that's part of the beauty of having a digital ecosystem because it enables additional features like teleaudiology, synchronous and asynchronous. So um, uh, you mentioned the probe. The probe is connected to a small little box, which is about the size of a smartphone. That 
is connected through Bluetooth to the smartphone or tablet. And then, of course, everything else runs off uh, the software, touchscreen, uh, very user friendly, um, and, and it enables us to really simplify it in such a way that the training becomes really minimal to get someone like a technician or a community health worker to facilitate accurate testing with the device. Well, this is really exciting because it's well known that the earlier you diagnose any hearing issues in a child, uh, the better it is to either address the issue itself or to make teaching accommodations for a person based on their ability to hear. So this is terrific and I look forward to seeing it deployed. Yeah, great, thanks Andy. We are also really excited. I mean, Eurex has a vision of healthy hearing for everyone everywhere. We believe um, we're a social enterprise that works to get that done through a mission of you know, using um, smart digital technologies that anyone can use anywhere. And this really fits well with that uh, trajectory of development that we followed over the last uh, eight years. And as we mentioned, uh, the year OAE is really kind of closing a loop for us. We've developed screening and test equipment for young children, for adults, uh, but now we can extend that to newborns. Uh, we can add the objective testing facility of a world first Bluetooth enabled uh, autoacoustic emission device. And I think uh, one of the other things we just briefly touched on, which may be worth just mentioning again is, uh, we have really attempted with this development, not just to have another OAE device on the market. Uh, the, the, the idea behind this was really to have something that uh, can be put on the market at a fraction of traditional device costs, because the, we have a big vision of making this work yes, in established high income markets where there are newborn hearing screening. Uh, programs, but particularly we've developed this to align with the WHO priority of making newborn hearing screening available in low and middle income countries, where currently the reality is it's not happening. And one of the major reasons is prohibitive costs and the limitations of existing devices. So, so we really believe that this can make a, a big, very big difference to provide a scalable program in low income settings. Oh, I'm 100% behind that. And, and I agree that it's not only the cost, but it's also the ability to be used in local health clinic settings. As for example, a clinic which may not have an internet connection or a field clinic in a rural area where the data can then be downloaded and reviewed by professionals in distant locations. So this is really exciting and I appreciate you spending some time with me to describe it. Great, thanks, Andy. It's uh, it's super to be able to share with you, and uh, we're really excited to see this um, in the hands of actual clinicians. And uh, look forward to to have some follow up conversations. As do I. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. <laughs>